Good morning. Today we have, uh, well, Britt has a prenatal appointment. I'm going along with her. I've had to miss the last couple, so I gotta be here for this one. You ready? Will be once I've de-shedded. What are we all supposed to be learning at this appointment? Uh, this will be the day that we, I'm getting an exam to determine whether or not I need a C-section, but all signs point to yes, unfortunately, but what can you do? That's right. As long so. as the baby's okay, and I want to ask about uh, hospital tours and stuff, and ask if I still get a maternity suite, even though I'm a surgical patient. Like, I've heard that some people haven't gotten one in this town if they got a C-section, which I don't find right, but yeah, that's all the annoying questions of the doctor that he probably won't know. <laughs> okay, but the big thing is we get to find out today if it's going to be a C-section or not. Yes. And if it's a C-section, what I've learned from Britt is that then the baby is delivered a week early. If not earlier. Which means that it would then be delivered uh, around March 25th instead of its due date on April 1st. So... You might not get to share a birthday, but that's okay as long as the baby's healthy. I'm thinking more so along the lines of my time off. Because my time off I've booked off since March 17th or on March 17th, which is Friday, which would only give me one week to make sure everything is ready before the baby comes in instead of two. No pressure. But at least then with a C-section, you know when the baby's coming. Well, you hope. Like You know pretty much down to the day, down to the hour almost. Unless you're my cousin Ashley and then you go into labor a week before your C-section anyway. Well, don't do that. <laughs> I'll do Anything that. can happen. I'm gonna start confusing work if I have to keep changing it. We don't know what we're doing. It's our first baby, if you're new. It's our first one. We've been trying for a very long time. Five and a half years. Five and a half years. This was an IVF baby. Uh, so we went through, she went through a lot. Well, we went through it together. We, but I'd say we. It's a big thing. It's a big thing for us. So uh, we're excited. We're gonna go talk to the doctor now and learn some more. Jeez, yeah. we got back. We came back. <laughs> so it was a good appointment, I think. Yeah, got a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have officially made the decision to have a C-section. Well, I made the decision, Josh supported it. Mm -hmm. It was really up to us. We had three options. And uh, I decided that in my gut, I felt like a C-section was the safest option. So it's not ideal. It's not my birthing dream, but that's okay. It's okay, as long as the kid's okay. That's what matters. So that means that the baby will be here before its due date on April 1st. Yeah, no shared birthday, but that's okay. It's still okay. special that the due date was April 1st. Mm-hmm. So it'll be, we're expecting, we don't know the exact date yet. We have to go and talk have a meeting with the surgeon and figure out an exact date when they want to book it in. Uh, that could change as well also. Like you said before, your cousin uh, had an early one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so a week or two before the due date, I guess, between mm -hmm. that timeline. Around March 25th or something, but at least we'll know the day where it will be no later than this day at this time. We just have to figure out what day that is. Yeah. But everything else looked good, right? Yeah. Healthy yeah. baby? Baby's heart rate's still 150. Or mm -hmm. above, 150 to 153, I think something like that. Um, but yeah, everything was good. Belly size is still measured good. Pretty normal, yeah. Not gaining a lot of weight, so that's good. The baby needs to gain weight. I don't need to gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everything's going really, really well. And our doctor is still amazing and has the most soothing voice in the entire world. It's true human value in that man. It's just you, he walks into the room and he starts talking and everybody's anxiety is just, oh, just he has a voice. <laughs> He's a really good doctor. He He's good at what he does. I'm sure he doesn't talk like that all the time. We were talking about that too. If he did, and he'd I, be the most relaxing human to live with. I just fall yeah. asleep all the time. <laughs> uh, the only other concern that we had was my blood pressure was really, really high. Um, they took it four or five times and it was significantly higher. So we do have a blood pressure cuff at home, so now I gotta take my blood pressure every day. Um, yeah, and write it down for him, and I'll see him in, I think, six or seven days from now. So, so now it's every week until? 
No, okay. it's it's every second week until March hits. It's just that he's not there the week after, so I had to make my appointment sooner. Oh, okay. Works out fine for the blood pressure results, so. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good appointment. That's that. Hi, sweetheart. So, on to another topic, <gasps> diesel. A couple of days ago, I mentioned at the end of my vlog uh, that Diesel's been having a lot of anxiety problems and panic attacks in the truck as he's gotten older. Mm -hmm. The first time I noticed it was years ago when we crossed the uh, ferry to Newfoundland in Canada. It's an eight hour ferry ride and he has to wait in the truck while I'm upstairs. And when I got back, he was having, he had a little bit of a panic attack, or shaking and cling to my side. And there wasn't anything I could do to console him or bring his anxiety down. It just had to wait for it to pass. Uh, and then it didn't really happen much, but uh, lately, as he's come on the road with me, any abnormal noises, like if I go down a gravel road in summertime, or if I hit uh, rumble strips when you, sometimes they're on the center line or right on the line, if the truck just goes bzzz, onto those rumble strips just once, he starts uh, shaking a little bit and uh, the noise of the truck. So he's been having some anxiety problems. So, He's been mostly retired here at home, at home. but uh, we're gonna try something, Diesel. We got you a gift. We got you something that might help. Present. It's called a Thunder Shirt. And this is for dog anxiety. Uh, it's great for fireworks, thunderstorm, separation anxiety, car and air travel, leash pulling, barking, licking, and more. And that's what it looks like. And it pretty much gives them pressure around their torso that comforts them. So we're going to give it, uh, give it a shot and see if it helps them. He's a weasel. So it recommends in the instructions to first present it to him for the first time as a plate with treats on it. So that he associates it with something positive. Yes. That's a lot of treats. Oh, lucky boy. Diesel, come. Diesel. Come I on in. something for you. Second, looks like I got this fancy plate for you. Second, okay. You see this? Look, we're gonna come over here where mom can see. Oh, oh, uh -oh. there's one. Look right there. Plug in the rest of them. He said, "Look, <laughs> hey, hey, look over here." Oh, oh, now you see him. Oh, oh yeah. Boy, oh, some of your favorites, right? Some zoops. It's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> so, come here, Diesel. I'm gonna put this on you like this. We got the other boys locked up just for now, so that we can do this as stress-free as possible. Yeah, so we don't trigger his anxiety before this thing's even on and associate it with something bad. Put that on like that. Mm -hmm. And this goes around here. Diesel. Diesel, you want to spin around so they can see what I'm doing on this side? Diesel, come here. No. Nope. Okay, well, it's Velcro on this side. It goes <laughs> under. And wraps up in here like this. And then this flap goes over that like that. Oh, <gasps> wow. Thunder shirt. Tizo, you look like a star horse. So sporty. Do you feel relaxed? Did you wrap it tight enough? I think Has so. Has to be like a firm hug. Not yeah. a tight hug. Don't hurt his belly, but a firm hug. It's pretty stretchy material. So yeah. Okay. A firm hug. Cut off any circulation. That's no. Pretty good. All right. Wow, Weasel. Diesel. You look so good, so handsome. What do you think? Wow, what a good boy. Does it, it feel calming? So starting. So we're gonna try this in the truck with him and see if it uh, see if it helps. <laughs> what do you think? Come here. Outside. It's supposed to help with barking. <laughs> well, it was only two barks, so it wasn't bad. Not bad. He didn't cry after. <gasps> yeah. Sit. 
Should I bring up your brothers? See what they think of your new outfit? They're gonna be so jealous. Whoops. Here goes, baby. <laughs> well, that's nice. Careful, careful. Alright. Hi, Wiener. Did he get a new shirt? <laughs> Do I get one too? You don't need one. Damn, we're... You just got a bag of $70 food. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if this helps you. It's like getting a big hug all the time. We just switched over Frankie's food to a, uh, a NeuroCare food because he's got dementia and he was sundowning really, really bad. For those of you who don't know what sundowning is, humans do it too with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, it's very common for them to get confused once the sun starts to go down and Frankie was walking in circles. He was confused. He was crying. He was taking Christmas ornaments off the tree. It was just, he wasn't himself. I could tell something was wrong, um, and he is old. We don't know how old, but he is older. So uh, we decided to try out a recommended um, Purina Pro Plan NeuroCare kibble for him, and we got a free bag from the vet. And then today we went and picked up the second bag, and it was like sixty-seven seventy-three. I think was the exact amount after tax for a six-pound bag of food. That's right here. Yep, there she is. You guys are expensive. So expensive. But they're the healthiest seniors in town. That's right. We, uh... So yeah, I mean, thankfully he's, he's a little guy. He's less than 20 pounds, so he doesn't take a lot to feed, but... I have, I don't know if it's just a placebo effect on me or not, but I have noticed a lot of improvement. He seems to be a lot less confused and crying a lot less. He's clingier lately, but I think he's just picking up on that from Wiener because he takes a lot of cues from Wiener, so. Hey, Frank. Frank. Hey, you. Hey, you. Hi, Chevy. Frankie. You want attention from your dad? Hey, big guy. <laughs> it's time to get back to work and we got the throne all set up plush blankets soft comfortable you know what that means you got the weasel in his thunder shirt i'm just on the weasel i'm so relaxed right now guys you don't even you don't even know so relaxed. This thing is awesome. This is my thunder shirt. I'm a thunder weasel. And I just want to sleep. It's so nice. I've never been so stress free in my life. You do look pretty relaxed, Diesel. You think it's going to help? We're going to give it a shot. We're not going far, okay? Just going to go to the paw. And a couple other short runs. We'll be home in a couple of days, okay? You definitely do look like you're pretty relaxed. Hope it's working. Well, I guess I could have looked at the forecast before I left. That is my bad. That is unlike me. But it's a cold one today. So it doesn't really matter what I do. It's going to be one of those keep it going, keep it running kind of nights. I'm here at the yard. Got Diesel in the cab there, just walked him. He's keeping warm. I don't know if you can see him, probably too dark. He's in the passenger seat right there. It is minus 31 outside Celsius. If you're wondering what that is in Fahrenheit, it's cold. We're gonna sleep right here on this wonderful lot because our, uh, our facility is right behind over there. The big office and everything and there's a driver's lounge. So if my truck suddenly decides to quit running, I have some more warm diesel and I can go. You can see diesel in the back window here now. Uh, you see him? He's kind of all fogged up. So 
so it's been fun. Nice being at home, but it's time to get out here and make some money. First thing in the morning, I've got to go get loaded. Like I've been telling you, we've got to rush off to the paw. This whole week is going to be like this, about minus 30 at night and about minus 25 during the day. Well, it is what it is. It's part of the job up here. This is our home, and we can take it. We don't mind the cold. Well, we'd rather not have the cold, but you know what? We'll deal with it. I've got old Blue's grill cover all buttoned up for the night. Keep this engine as warm as possible. I've got my fuel tanks full of fuel. And as this engine runs, it's gonna keep all the fuel and fluids moving. It's gonna bring fuel from the tanks through the filters to the engine. It's not gonna burn it all. Some of it's gonna go back to the tanks and keep this fuel moving in here and keep these tanks nice and warm. If I take my hand here, put it on the tank, the tank is actually warm to the touch. It's not hot, but it's pretty warm to the touch. It's dirty right now. I don't really want to touch it that much, but... <laughs> oh, so yeah, as long as we keep uh, keep things moving. That's the best way to keep, wa keep warm in these cold temperatures. You know, some people ask, how do you live in these cold temperatures? The only reason you're here in Manitoba is because you want to work. That's the only reason anybody ever moved here, is you want to work. And that's the only way to keep warm. You gotta work. You gotta keep moving. As soon as you stop, you freeze. You stop, you die. You go, 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 go. We don't become a G7 country by being lazy and doing nothing. You gotta work hard. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep things moving. Doesn't matter what the temperature is outside. Doesn't matter if it's snowing, raining, if the sun is shining, if it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit or if it's minus 40, you keep going and you keep working. And that's the attitude of everybody who moves here. Because there's no other reason to be here. <laughs> if there wasn't money to be made here, believe me, everybody here would be gone. Money, the great uniter. Doesn't matter where you come from, you wanna make some money? Here's the catch. It's in Manitoba. Uh, it's too much for a lot of people and they just go, nope. And they go straight to Toronto or straight to Vancouver. Well, that's fine. You guys can't take the cold. You guys aren't tough enough. Fine, Toronto and Vancouver for you. You wanna be on the prairies? You gotta be a little tougher. I'm not even joking. You gotta be tough to be on the prairies. You have to deal with extreme heat in the summertime, extreme mosquitoes and bugs Oh, sorry, my mustache is itching me right here. And, uh, and the wintertime is cold, so we get the extreme of everything. But you know what? It's home, and I love it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything, and I will defend it with everything in me. On its own. Diesel, how do you like your Thunder shirt today? I know the lighting's not the greatest in here. I took it off. It's right here. How do you like it? It actually seemed to really help him. Like, honestly, <laughs> it's, I can't really make an assessment based off one day. Uh, or one evening with like not even a hundred kilometers or 60 miles behind us We'll have to see how it goes through this whole trip, but it seemed to keep them calm You know we the roads are pretty rough right now because it's so cold any moisture That's like seeped into any of the cracks on the road is all expanding like freezing and expanding right now So it makes the roads really rough at this time of year So the road truck was bouncing around as we were bobtailing to the yard here and he had his thunder shirt on and he seemed to be doing just fine. He seemed to just be relaxing, just chill in the back. Once we got here, I took it off of him. And... What do you think, Diesel? You think that thunder shirt's gonna do you some good? I hope so, because I really want to take him with on more trips. The shirt is supposed to be like a, <coughs> it's supposed to be like a big hug, right? So when, when he's feeling stressed out or, you know, a little bit nervous, the shirt's supposed to make him feel like he's, you know, nice and cozy, getting a nice, nice hug. And studies have shown that it really does help. I will let you know if it works or not. The brand is Thunder Shirt, I, I believe that's what it's called. I showed it to you before. If you want to try it on your dogs after you see how Diesel works on it. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I don't know the owners. I've never talked to them. This is just something that I bought myself. This is actually uh, a recommendation from my wife, Britt. 
She's the one that said that we should get this for diesel like years ago already. Thunder shirt. That's the brand. For dog anxiety. It's great for fireworks, thunderstorms, separation anxiety, car and air travel, leash pulling, barking and licking, and more. 100% satisfaction guarantee. Well, there you have it. 100%. What does it say on the back here? Let me read this to you. I find this fascinating. It says here, how it works. Uh, the Thunder Shirt's patented design applies gentle, constant pressure on a dog's torso, and this pressure has an amazing calming effect for most dogs. Huh. Used for symptoms including panting, shaking, drooling, barking, whining, hiding, scratching, licking, bolting, eliminating indoors, and more. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. What would happen with Diesel when he had his little bit of panic attacks? He would just sit beside me and shake, which was strange, right? Because he grew up in the truck with me. This is all he knows. He knows what's going on. He knows where we are. He knows what's happening, and he's he's grown up around it, and he's loved it his whole life. He's gonna be turning 12 this year, in like 10 years of his life. But you know, something in here, uh, he started having anxiety in his older age. So. Here it says, feels like a hug. It says, pressure has been used to successfully reduce anxiety for many years for both animals and humans. Examples include parents swaddling infants, veterinarians using squeeze shoots when vaccinating cattle, and people with autism using pressure to relieve persistent anxiety. So yeah, this, I'm not doing an ad for them, but I'll let you know how it goes. Just like I always say, uh, I only talk about products with you that work for me and that I actually use myself. And if I haven't come to a conclusion yet, I'll let you know. Just like this, we're just trying to stay for the first time. So thanks for joining us today, guys. It was very nice. I'm very excited to be back. The Weezer is back. Guess who's back? It's me. It's Weezer. Can you go do some trucking? Got a Sunday Weezer here. Sunday shirt. Doing good. I'm an old man now. You are getting a little old, aren't you, Diesel? So old. So old. Look at me, I'm so old and wise like a sensei. Sure. You bet. You are pretty smart, that's for sure. And I am happy to have you back in the truck with me. I hope that this really works out. It's not the same without you, bud. I don't like trucking without my weasel. And they've all been asking about you. They've been missing you. I told them you're relaxing at home, enjoying a semi-retirement. Don't touch my paws. Don't touch, that's the thing I don't like the most. Okay? Like this paw? Yeah, so don't touch my paws. A little grumpy? <laughs> He's never liked it when I touched his paws. So hit that subscribe button. Tomorrow we'll be trucking, and it's gonna be cold. So I hope you tune in to keep me warm. Uh, by clicking the like button. It, it helps keep me warm. So right now, go down below the video, click the like button, and if you really wanna send me a cup of hot chocolate or something, hit that subscribe button and the bell. And uh, what will feel like a wave of warmth will wash over me and uh, keep me from freezing solid, and I won't die. So I appreciate it. <laughs> we'll see you in tomorrow's video. It's gonna be fun.